Soon, soon you are out in the hall chasing after the hooting goblins. You can't fall on them. Your party ought to easily be able to handle that many. You turn the corner ahead before you have a chance to use your bow. You pour on the speed and sprint in between the dwarves to take the lead. It's a little disorienting moving this fast with your dark vision. Just a blurring of greys but, uh, but you're quickly getting the hang of it. As you turn the corner, you're half afraid of an ambush, but the goblins are gone. It's an empty hall with shut doors. You try, you'd run up to the first door, try it, it's locked. The other dwarves uh, turn the corner, huffing with the jangling armor. I don't know what doors they took, um, you say. Might have locked themselves in, no, says Thelma, scowling as he strides to the side of the hall and stares at the floor. He waves his hand at the other dwarves. Let's get a lift, Korag. Uh, Korak hurries over to your surprise. He lifts one of the flat floor stones. Thalmer stands in front of the opening of the floor with only his eyes above the top of his shield. He peers in for a moment and lets out a breath uh, with a sigh. Sneaky snot licker. It's not dungeon after all, you say. Uh, might be breaches there too, grunts uh, Thalmer, unsling his backpack. We have to find the nexus and blow it. What have you got in there? He whisper explosives? Thalmer doesn't answer as he unbuckles his pack, uh, reaches in and pulls out a thin cord, what you presume is a fuse. Explosives are rare and that's fine with you. Why? Explosives are rare? Why are explosives rare? That's re really weird. Explosives are rare? I guess the... Uh, yeah, I'm guessing what's happening. Okay, 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 okay. I have heard of this. I think I've read a, a martial arts manual or some shit in that, like that. And they said that... Um, Explosives were like heavily controlled by the government uh, because in that manual they're like the, the a trained martial arts a martial artist can be killed with uh, explosives. So like uh, the government essentially controlled the uh, the fucking flow of um, explosives and they only used it for war so that the martial artists are not affected. Because if the the explosive were to get into the common man's hand then the entire point of having martial artists around would be gone and a lot of the uh, missions and like other stuff that the martial artists used to handle would not be able to be handled because like a common person could just chuck a fucking explosive and kill a bunch of experienced soldiers and shit like that so it's probably that so that's why explosives are rare and that's fine with you your father blew a finger off with a small explosive and he tried to open an iron chest you had a fear of them ever since judging by the bulge of thermos pack this there this is a much larger one than your father used uh hate to bring this up since i know you're trying to protect the castle but how are we supposed to get out of if you blow the tunnel you said you uh, lend me underground to the temple of eternal love remember a tunnel out is a tunnel in, says Thalma. We blow it and slow them down. It's a tunnel of shame, uh, said Horam, almost in a whisper. They'll have our beard shaved if we show him that, uh, says Korag. He already saved our beards, I wager, says Thalma in a heavy sigh. And let's face it, what good is a big oaf human in a goblin tunnel? He'd be crawling like a dung beetle. He's got magic, though. Petty, uh, pretty handy, says one of the dwarves. Thalma shakes his head. Never punish a man for being handy. He looks at you. Since you're determined to die on your own way, we'll help you do it. We all owe you that. Uh, you... You bow low and all the dwarves uh, pause their preparation and bow in return. Unexpected honor, says Egra, a tinge of surprise in her voice. Next time we meet, you're buying the ale, you say, but it better be top shelf. Thalmer smiles large enough to see. Uh, clearly underneath this copious beard, he turns to the others. Get those uh, bangers armed, Horam. Show our friend the tunnel and make it quick. Horam nods and motions for you to follow. Despite his short legs, Horam uh, makes good time as he... As he does uh, what must be dwarven sprint, you both run, <laughs> dwarven sprint. You both run uh, through a hall down stairway, and soon you're at a door. Horam pulls out a key ring and unlocks the door. Inside is a freshly, uh, modestly furnished sleeping quarters. Horam hurries over to the wall and pulls a hanging tapestry uh, to the side. Uh, palpates the wall for a moment, brings finds a grip on the brick and pulls. A hidden door opens. The tunnel of shame, says Horam. Shut the door behind you. Don't tell anyone about it. You peer inside. It's a reasonably wide tunnel and when crafted with lit lanterns in scones along the wall. Does this take me to the temple of... You start to say, but Horam is already out of the room. He slams the bedroom door and there's a click. Hurry, champion. Our destiny awaits us, says Egra as you enter the tunnel. Why is Egra want? Why does Egra want to go there? Does she want to talk to Anuxis or something? Uh, enter the tunnel and shut the secret door behind. Ignoring Egra, you listen. You hear nothing other than distant rumbling and something that might resemble scratching on stone. You take a deep breath and sheath your sword and begin slowly um, walking, keeping extra alert. Unfortunately, the tunnel curves back and forth, not allowing you to see very far, only 15 meters at best. The stone pillars every 10 meters are so supporting the ceiling. These pillars are wide enough to hide a man, but nothing more. The tunnel must have... Um, 
been very nice at one point a uh, long time ago because it was paved over a beautiful works beautifully worked stone however now water drips from ancient holes in the ceiling collecting in stagnant puddles uh, what do you plan to do when we reach the temple you ask egra what's your interest in euxius uh, who says i have an interest in him who says i have a plan says egra uh, perhaps i only wish to go there because so many others want to as they say in words as they say in some words nothing attracts a crowd like a crowd <laughs> oh that's a good one you want to go there because you think there's a crowd you say the tricks are very social says egra that is not a real answer there was plenty of social opportunities the castle we just left although likely fruitless you're about to question egra further the sword begins to glow angrily interrupting your thought that's not good you think you see nothing but a curved tunnel ahead uh, you rather you rather your glowing sword not give you away on the other hand maybe it would be wise to keep it at the ready it has proven time and time again to be a powerful weapon another option would be to go invisible i think i'm going to switch to my dagger i don't think bow would be a good one because i don't think i want to give away my position so i'm just going to switch to dagger shoot your sword and pull out the dagger and listen there is nothing you slowly approach even more um you press to the other outer wall so that you can see further through the bend someone is kneeling in the middle of the passageway over a man lying on his back a woman a man is lying on his back and a woman based on her shapely form her curves um highlighted by close fitted chain mail armor she has no helm revealing long silky black hair another man in plate mail lies lies on the ground near the woman like his companion he is on his back based on the intricate etches etchings on his expensive looking armor you'd say he's a knight was a knight even from here you can see his lifeless eyes but blood, ru blood runes are smeared up on his armor and the stonework nearby oh, is a fucking soul crushing going on suddenly a hulking man in plate mail springs out from behind one of the pillars several meters ahead expect he's probably not a man his visor is down yet you can see two ferocious red glowing eyes through the silt uh, despite his uh, particularly heavy armor he charges with amazing speed and swings a dark broad sword now to crisis 3 with only a dagger you have no hope of parrying his blows so you leap back at the tip of his dark blade slices your chest he strikes he presses forward swiftly striking out again and again in a flurry of expertly placed swings drawing on all your dexterity you manage to avoid any direct hits but his terrible blade slashes into you over and over sh shallowly For only a second you are uh, becoming soaked with your own blood again I, as i said is too much fucking pain in his life uh, with your own blood you retreat back as best as you can drawing your sword which now bursts into white flames um he knocks your sword to the side hold jackal comes a clear commanding voice uh, the woman who had been kneeling stands a few meters behind the fiendish knight now that you see her beautiful uh, see her face you recognize the beautiful and her cruel beautiful woman and her cruel smile as zazel leave him my slave says zazel uh, soothingly to the fiendish knight i know this one oh boy i, I didn't think azazel would actually jump into the, all this uh, this whole fray um let's see oh oh shit yeah i guessed as much i was uh, i got the first rank on my own because i had so much fucking morale look at this i had 23 morale that's the only reason i got to what i got to i had some life and that's why i got pushed over the edge but even then i think my morale was so fucking high i made several good choices this chapter but i also made several terrible choices this chapter i feel like i've made uh, several good choices no i think i've made some terrible choices and some okay choices i think uh, i'm somewhere between there and one or two good choices this chapter was fucking huge but anyway uh, thank you so much for watching the link in the description to the background music there's also a link to uh, my patreon my twitter and to the game Go check all those things out, like and subscribe, and I'm gonna see you next time with the best choices of this chapter. Uh, bye bye.